The chassis and the pressure vessel make up the structural backbone of the whole pod. The chassis supports and connects all of the components to the wheels while supporting any loads. This allows all of the components to operate efficiently while reducing any risk of structural failure. As the pod has many electrical components and is operating in a vacuum, to allow the components to operate safely, a protective pressure vessel was designed. This pressure vessel separates the electrical components from the vacuum conditions. The chassis was designed to be as lightweight as possible, therefore structural analysis was performed to optimise the design and to eliminate unnecessary mass. The analysis allowed us to choose aluminium as the optimal material, not only to keep the mass down, but also to maintain its structural integrity. The electrical system it consists of the battery packs that provide power to the eddy current brake arrays, the linear induction motors, the pod's PLCs, the microcontrollers and the sensors used during the pod's operation. Our pod is a fully electric vehicle. From all components, from the eddy current brake arrays to the linear induction motors to the Siemens PLC, are all carried on board and are all powered by an onboard battery pack. To date, we've designed and developed a prototype linear induction motor. From here, we are looking to design, develop an upscaled version, which we'll implement in the finished pod design. The linear induction motor is different to the rotary induction motor in that instead of having a rotor, which spins, it uses the track itself to propel. The dimensions of the linear induction motor are approximately 350 millimeters long by 200 millimeters wide by about 100 millimeters deep. The linear induction motor geometry is broken up into two main parts. The first is a steel core constructed of multiple layers of electric steel sandwiched together. The second is a series of coils which are wound together with copper wire and wrapped over the core of the motor. The brain of the system is actually going to be a programmable logic controller, which is also known as the PLC. The PLC uses microcontrollers to help with processing power. We also need to control the two linear induction motors. This is done with the help of two variable speed drives that the PLC talks to. The autonomous control and wiring act as a brain and nervous system of the pod. We have features like electromagnetic acceleration, electromagnetic braking, and remote access to the pod in real time. The acceleration of the pod requires a 320 volt DC battery supply. We need to monitor these batteries. So with the help of linear technology, we are able to implement a battery management system. We also use sensors to monitor system status like vibration, speed, voltage, current, and distance. Due to resource constraints, we used a wheeled prototype rather than a magnetic levitation because of research and development time and also power draw from the system. We selected pneumatic tyres because they're reliable and simple. Pneumatic tyres also offer dampening, which is required under braking situations where the air actually dampens the tyre to ensure that we don't have a lot of moment transfer. The wheels and centre rail brake supplement our forward tier redundancy braking system, which also includes the linear induction motor and the eddy current braking array. The eddy current braking system works by producing a very large magnetic field this magnetic field travels across an air gap into the aluminium track. This produces eddy currents in the track, which in turn creates a force that's used for decelerating the pod. The test module has validated the simulation results. The WIC Hyper Hyperloop pod will consist two braking modules on either side. This will provide approximately 1,000 newtons of braking force at speeds up to 50 meters per second. Testing and validating the design was an important part in designing the eddy current brake. This was done by spinning a very large aluminium disc that emulated the pod travelling at approximately 50 metres per second. The Vic Hyper stability system is not an off-the-shelf solution. So our centre rail stability system incorporates four wheels on each side for front and back, which prevents a pod from deviating left and right along the tube. The stability system incorporates bearing wheels that are attached to arms, which are then connected to rubber mounts that slide along four metal rods attaching to the main block. There are four stability systems. Two are situated up the front and the other two at the back of the pod. The shell crate for the pod was not only needed as an aerodynamic element, but also for the case of a normal atmospheric pressurization. The shape of the shell was determined by the size of the enclosed components and the size of the tube that it would be travelling down, which means it was one of the last components to be designed and built. The construction took place, which included assembling three high-density foam plugs, which then allowed us to create a mould for the shell. 
Carbon fibre was chosen as the material for the shell due to its lightweight and structural properties.